It seems like it's a good day to be a Mad Max orc, so let's chug some engine oil and talk through the various boggies, bikes and planes with an overview of the Cult of Speed detachment in the upcoming Codex Orcs. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, where today we're talking Orcs, and in this video I thought we'd look at the Cult of Speed detachment, one of the ones that could drive the Greenskins to a very different playstyle in the new Codex. In the video we'll talk a bit about Cult of Speed and the buggers in the past, talk through the detachment rule and stratagems in full, every single speed freak in the army, and finish up with a few closing thoughts as to some stuff that's looking particularly strong. First up, the speed freaks are kind of a sub-range within Codex Orcs these days. It's always been at least a fairly iconic thing for Orcs in the past. War bikers, death copters, buggies and war tracks zooming their way towards the enemy, racing to be the first ones to smash into the enemy's lines. Imperial commanders struggle to get to grips with them, such as the rough and ready and crazy way that these hooligans can redeploy, zooming across vast tracts of territory to strike the foe at a completely unexpected angle, right where it hurts. In the past, the War Track and War Buggy were some of the oldest and kind of least well aging models in the Orc range, along with the Death Copter. And Games Workshop updated the range in some style with a big October release, in which they kind of jumped the shark a little bit and released not one but six different buggy kits the Death Killer War Trike painted up as Goths, and then one other buggy painted in the colours of each of the other major clans trading out sort of the flexible war gear options that the previous one had for a whole bunch of individual custom designs, and in all honesty I think the miniatures are really quite cool ones, put them all together and they really do look like a Mad Max style orky army. It was kind of surprising to see Games Workshop go quite so heavy of these in terms of plastic kit releases, I'm not sure if individually any single one of these would sell super well for them. In the past you have been able to spam some of these super hard, but fortunately in more recent Codex Orcs you're limited to just three copies of each of the buggies as per the normal rule of three, so you don't get silly lists like people spamming nine scrap jets or squig buggies, which seemed to be the thing to do when the 9th edition Codex first came out. Overall I feel like they did quite well with these, and we got some nice new Death Copters alongside the Beast Snagger release last time. They are really quite expensive to buy in monetary terms though, versus the amount of points they cost in game, Orcs being kind of known for their vehicles being a bit wildfire, and perhaps not desperately elite compared with other factions, even if they are cool and customised. Perhaps as a knock-on effect to them getting quite so much attention, Games Workshop do seem to be keen to try and make them play in their own playstyle. In 9th edition we had the choice between War and Speed War for the Orc Codex, big shooting buffs if it made more sense for your orky army just to be blazing away with all the Dakar, and they even had their own army of renown in Speed Mob as well, which I think in 9th edition really did work quite well. Besides maybe right at release, it was never really one of the absolute strongest ways to play Orcs in 9th edition, so I thought it was interesting and different enough to genuinely still be kind of playable and certainly in casual games, and really pushed you in a completely different way to build the army, which I think is generally the idea with these detachments and different ways to play. That one gave you boosts like allowing you to advance a lot of the time, and also gain invulnerable saves for moving fast. So far in 10th edition, the buggies have generally been kind of weak, not really cropping up in competitive play all that much. They're quite fast and their durability isn't all that bad for their low points cost, but they just don't really have a lot of hitting power, partly due to a consequence of rockets only wounding its toughness 10 or more on a 5+, plus, when ideally you'd probably want them to be in a position where they can actually threaten enemy tanks. In any case though, the datasheets have got a whole load of power with the updated Cult of Speed in the 10th edition codex. The Cult of Speed is the new orky formation representing speed freaks in game, basically orcs but Mad Max, and basically the 10th edition interpretation of the speed mob formation from before. Adrenaline Junkies is the core rule for it it seems, and this one allows speed freaks to shoot after advancing and after falling back, and I feel like both parts of that rule are really quite nice for buffing the buggies in particular. For an army of vehicles that's mainly going to do its damage with shooting, both of those are kind of stand out really. Advancing is all rather nice, as of course that means more speed, most of the buggies are going to be moving 12 inches, then an extra d6 inches, so they'll be able to gain line of sight, range and firepower very well. And in the turn that you call the war as well, they'll be getting their 5 plus invulnerable save, and can also go on to charge even after advancing, which is rather nice. Otherwise though, and perhaps similarly meaningful if not more so, is the fall back and shoot, which I think is a really nice choice for this formation. 
Generally, these bogeys want to be getting up in the enemy's face and being a big disruptive threat on the board, but then they have problems when they get charged and they don't do all that much damage in close combat. It means that often you still want to be shooting the enemy unit that just charged you with all the rest of the bogeys, so usually the one that's in combat wants to be dropping back rather than firing in melee with big guns never tire. And this rule basically allows you to still play aggressively, but not have to worry about losing the model's firepower if you get locked up. Really great to know that your opponent can't just nuisance charge you to disrupt you or hold you up too much. You can just fall back, keep on blazing, and still be moving across the board quite quickly to get where you need to be. And on top of that, it means that you can potentially do nuisance charges with a lot more confidence. The bogeys have at least somewhat tanky profiles that it's going to be hard for your standard basic troopers to be able to chew through and can just be annoying and get in the way and cause targeting priority issues for things like enemy vehicles means that you can fairly happily just crash your buggies straight into the enemy, cause your opponent difficult choices between falling back or getting suboptimal damage, and then when it comes back to your turn, provided they've not countercharged you or shot you down, you can then go on to do what you like. All of this only applies to the Speed Freak data sheets, and in Codex Orcs, that's War Bikers and Death Copters, all the buggies, including the Death Killer War Trike, and interestingly enough, all the planes get the Speed Freak keyword this time round, and despite Games Workshop seemingly not liking to support aircraft with too many rules, a couple of them I think do get interesting in this detachment. You also have Speed Freaks on the Warboss on Warbike from the Forge World Index as well, though things like trucks and battle wagons don't get the Speed Freak keyword. Though there are a couple of things within this detachment that could make you want to use them anyway. As for other Orky detachments, it doesn't lock you out of taking other stuff either, so you could still have Gretchen to hold down your home objective and farm some CP and all sorts of nasty melee threats or other scary stuff in the army. Overall, I do think that that's really quite a good core rule for supporting the buggies in particular, and certainly doesn't hurt for the death copters and bikes either, means that you could be hurtling forward in the war and still shoot and then charge. Moving on to the stratagems, and for 1 CP, their speediest freaks. This one gives you a 5 plus invulnerable save when a speed freaks unit is attacked, it can be ranged or melee and then that increases to a 4 plus invulnerable save for vehicles of toughness 8 or less, so basically the buggies and the truck. In general, hard to go too far wrong with that, it's a really nice reactive defensive boost, you are only increasing the data sheets from the 6 plus invulnerable save that they'd get anyway, but does mean that just your one key buggy or war bike unit will be harder to remove than your enemy might expect. Maybe the biggest downside being that you are affecting at least fairly cheap units with this, the buggies all clock in at 100 points or less pre-codex. For 1 CP, there's one called Squig Flinging. This one is one where a orc just literally chucks a squig out a window to surprise some nearby enemies. I'm sure that's exactly the sort of thing that they'd enjoy doing. You use this when a speed freak or truck ends a move within 9 inches of an enemy unit in the movement phase, and that triggers a single battle shock test at minus 1 to the test for that nominated enemy unit. I guess could occasionally be relevant for trying to score certain secondary objectives where you need to hold a point in the midfield perhaps, or stopping one enemy unit using a key stratagem. You could have a chance to prevent some really powerful stratagems if you wanted, but it's going to be unreliable as they could just pass that test. Moving into the big leagues though, and the Cult of Speed gets two fairly spectacular damage dealing stratagems. The first one is Daka Storm for 1 CP. This gives your Speed Freaks unit sustained hits 1 at range, which is pretty meaningful on Orky shooting where you hit on a 5 plus normally. That's going to be a plus 50% damage increase, and it gets boosted to sustained hits 2 when you're within 9 inch range. This means if you can close the distance, it's essentially double firepower within 9 inches if you did hit on a 5 plus. For example, a max out unit of war bikes with 6 models would average you 20 hits at strength 5, AP 1, damage 1 and twin links. Even the base 5 plus profile could still be interesting maybe on the Wasbomb warplane when it comes in from reserve, they wouldn't be able to trigger the 9 inch thing on the turn that it arrives. This one does seem genuinely threatening for zooming war bikers or death copters into close range for some massive firepower, though it seems that we're going to be weighing it up against the next one. The other really big damage dealer is called Blitzer Fire. This one's basically the same but with lethal hits. Again, it's a Speed Freaks unit, and for this one, you get lethal hits on a 6 or critical hits on a 5 plus if you're within 9 inches. It does specify that you can't combine this with Daka Storm on the same unit for just some sort of ridiculous massive damage combo. It is one or the other, though both of them are great. If you are hitting on a 5 plus and wounding on a 5 plus, this essentially amounts to literally just double damage straight out, even by getting lethal hits normally. That's pretty crazy for maybe things like the Megatrack Scrapjet, where you might be wounding vehicles on a 5 plus with all those rockets. 
and then if he gets to within half range, then that becomes essentially triple damage. On top of that, the Daka Jet gets automatic criticals, so it doesn't even need to be within 9 inches to get the lethal hits on 5s and 6s. That means that that crazy plane will absolutely love this. Every 5 or 6 will both get a sustained hit and a lethal hit, so that'll stack a whole ton of wounds on the enemy. Seems like it could be quite nice on the Death Copters as well, though they do get twin linked on their rockets. Just in general, this seems like a very nice way to try and punch up against tough stuff though. Otherwise, for 1 CP, we've got full throttle, plus 1 to wound on the charge. Again, pretty handy for Death Copters or War Bikers trying to take down something a bit unusually tough, particularly if you've got a Death Killer War Trike or a War Boss on War Bike attached. Finally, for 1 CP, there's more gits over here. This one's again a really nice one to have, a reactive normal move of 6 inches if the enemy moves within 9 inches of a Speed Freaks unit. This one's pretty much always nice to have in a detachment, really means that your opponent can't fully plan of exactly where your army is going to be. Often most impactful if they want to move something up to try and charge your unit and then it just scoots away and they're out of range. Or perhaps if they move up for a unit that wants to take an objective and then all of a sudden your scary buggy or war bikes or whatever suddenly hide behind terrain so the biggest scariest guns can't shoot them. Overall I feel like it's really quite a solid stratagem section there, more so than many of the rest. A nice reactive durability boost, three strong damage boosts and a good reactive move. Hard to go too far wrong with that. I guess they have allowed themselves a bit more craziness with the power of the stratagems, given that most of these can only affect sort of slightly lower investment units. I guess still a maxed out war biker squad with a death killer trike, or a maxed out death copter squad though, could still get some pretty massive efficiency out of these. Otherwise for the Cult of Speed, we've got the enhancements. First up, we've got the lovely names Waz Blaster. This one's Death Killer War Trike only, and it's recorded at 10 points in the codex. It gives the Death Killer War Trike a move shoot move 6 inches, but it can't charge after. I guess that means that you could have some drive-by war bikers going really quite quickly. If you're advancing and shooting with the Death Killer's automatic 6 inch to advance, then that's be 18 inches. Get within that 9 inch range for their AP boost perhaps. Maybe unload one of those damage stratagems and then move another 6 inches, so potentially 24 inches moved in a turn would still be able to unload some scary firepower. I guess you would have to weigh that up against charging though. If you start at the turn kind of close to the enemy already, it might just make more sense to move up, shoot and charge. It's not like the enemy is locking you in combat in this. Seems alright to have for 10 points as a point filler though. Perhaps one of the other really exciting ones that's also the most expensive is Faster Than Use. This one's an infantry model one, and it means that you can disembark from a transport model that's moved and still charge after. It's basically assault ramp, but for orcs. This one's very expensive, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. It turns your truck or battle wagon into essentially like an orky land raider. Pretty intimidating to think that you could have a great big battle wagon move its full 12 inches towards the enemy, perhaps have a war boss and a full unit of mega knobs jump out. They'd be jumping out the front to so an extra 3 inches closer, and then going on for a charge. That's an average of 22 inch threat range from the battle wagon there. Basically means that you could pretty much charge a unit from your deployment zone to the enemy's one. Maybe not a first turn charge, though one would certainly be easily achievable if the enemy moves forward even a little bit. I feel like a battle wagon might be one of the most obvious things for that. They could do it on a Gorkonaut, Morkonaut, Squigoth or Stomper or Truck Squad. Loads of possibilities with this one. You could even use it on Beast Snaggers jumping out of a Kill Rig or Hunter Rig. Next up, we've got the Squig Hide Tires for 15 points. This one's a consolidate of 6 inches for the Death Killer War Trikes unit. Not awful for jumping into another enemy unit to disrupt them and tie them up or moving on to an objective, but 15 points seems like at least a fair bit for something that won't be relevant every game. You're usually going to be reliant on actually wiping out infantry units in the fight phase, and while War Bikers aren't awful in combat, they're also not all that, so I'm a little bit less sold on this one really. Finally, you've heard of Might Makes Right, but what about Speed Makes Right? This one's 25 points, and in the command phase you farm a command point if you're within 9 inches of an enemy unit, and you can take this on any orc character model, it doesn't have to be a speed freak or anything. I feel like for 25 points it would be okay, but not stand out if it was in a codex in isolation. In reality though, in a codex where Gretchen exists, and it's 40 points to get command point farming, and also put like 22 OC on your home objective, I can't really see this one really being worth it versus the other things. Overall I feel like standout for value here is faster than used for 35 points. That's just awesome for getting some scary orc melee all the way up the board. 
and otherwise for an opportunistic death killer war type points filler, whilst blaster does seem nice, move shoot move is often disruptive, and he could use this after falling back as well. I feel like for 10 points there's going to be enough times in game when that's worth bringing along. Overall I think the Games Workshop have done at least fairly well in a speed freak support package there, they do have some genuine damage boosts that are meaningful enough to make their buggies and bikes punch up against tougher things, reactive moves and invulnerable saves are good, and the core rule is really good for making your army move faster and not get pinned down, it does feel like it's all very on theme. Quickly going through the speed freak units in the codex, first up we've got war bikers, they are basically unchanged in the codex besides gaining the speed freaks keyword, I feel like they are going to be a relevant unit here with all that DACA gunfire. It feels like their special rule just synergizes really qu quite nicely with the damage buff stratagems. They want to be within 9 inches anyway to get the AP 1, and that means they'll be in the position to have all the lethal and sustained hits they want. They aren't awful in melee as well, with getting a few chopper attacks and a power claw. Definitely could skirmish with lighter things. The Death Killer War Trike, similarly unchanged as well. A big tanky war trike with a little bit of melee to help out those war bikes in close combat, getting some killer jets and boomstick shooting. He slightly buffs the war bikers in combat with plus one to hit for a two plus. I feel like his auto advance six inches is going to be very relevant in this detachment. 18 inches to get the war bikers within that nine inch range when they need to be, potentially also going on to do a charge in the turn of the war with all your basic bikes hitting on a two plus strength five and four attacks. Death Copters are the other big unit that you can really build big and scary here. Again, no major changes in the codex besides the Speed Freaks keyword. They do seem like they could be helpful enough to chip in against harder targets. The rockets get twin linked, and getting sustained hits two on them if they do zoom up close and personal does seem scary enough to break through a bit. A unit of six of these that gets within nine inches and popping the sustained hit stratagem it gets around about nine wounds on average to a three plus save vehicle. It's still maybe not tearing the world apart in terms of damage, but they could follow that up with a charge, and they can certainly pulverise a horde unit in melee with 36 attacks at strength 5. Talking through the buggies, and again they're largely unchanged for the most part, the same profiles at toughness 7, 9 wounds, and moving 12 inches. The Boondacker Snazwagon spams out lighter infantry fire, which maybe doesn't feel like one of the most relevant. Its special rule has been nerfed slightly, no longer getting minus 1 to hit against monsters and vehicles unfortunately. The custom booster blaster seems worth having maybe one or two of them along, given that it can hand out the minus one to hit debuff. The firepower on that one is at least a little bit more general purpose. The rivet cannon going off at strength eight, AP one and damage two, potentially nine shots up close. The rocker truck squig buggy has the ignores line of sight squig launchers, though I feel like they're not going to be as useful ignores line of sight anymore. They lost the plus one to hit that they got against infantry, but if you do get a hit on at one target, then they get a minus two to move advance and charge on a four plus. Again, that one doesn't apply to monsters and vehicles, but still that could be kind of meaningful. Kind of sucks that it's only a 50-50 chance though. The squig mine is also a little bit random, a four plus chance to deal d6 mortal wounds to an enemy closing with the vehicle. Really big if it goes off, but far less so if not of course. The shock drum dragster looks like it's going to be a bit more interesting with this detachment specifically. It's got its sort of very heavy sniper profile shock rifle plus some rockets, but the good thing about this thing is that it jumps around the board when it advances, and in speed mob there's no reason not to advance every turn as you can still shoot, so you could have three of these for 225 points just repeatedly warping around the board, taking pot shots at the thing that makes most sense to. Maybe even jumping into the backfield to do secondary objectives or nuisance charges if there's enough room to land its base. I feel like you probably at least want one or two of these in a speed mob army now. Its damage output isn't spectacular, but still that redeploy rule is just worth having in the army. Finally for the core buggies, I feel like maybe one of the bigger winners out of this one would be the Megatrack Scrapjet. This is the one that fires off all the rockets. A rocket cannon with around about 4 or 5 rockets on average, plus some wing missiles and some big shooters to chase all that down. Feels like it could be one of the bonds that plays most nicely with all the boosts of the detachment, get it in close and maybe pop off one of the damage stratagems with lethal or sustained hits. It's got a few big shooters to take out a few light infantry, charge in for d3 mortal wounds plus the nose drill attacks at strength 8 and damage 2, and then happily fall back and shoot if it makes sense to next time round. I feel like if you're going for the buggies, this one still feels like it's probably one of the most interesting, just a bit more capable of tangling with enemy elites like Terminators, and at least having the potential to pose at least some threat to vehicles with the lethal hit stratagem. 
Finally for Speed Freaks, I didn't think I'd talk through all the planes, but the Wasp Bomb Blaster Jet is again one of the more threatening shooting units to use stratagems on. It doesn't really care about the advance and shoot or fall back and shoot from the detachment, though getting sustained or lethal hits seems a handy enough damage boost on its profiles just in the first place. It would require it being costed in line with its firepower though. The planes do still have the disadvantage of needing to start off the board, so they can't come in within 9 inches for the boosted version of stratagems immediately. The Dacker Jet feels at least scary on paper with the automatic critical hits that it gets from its super shooters. It means that if you picked up lethal hits for it, then every roll of a 5 plus is both sustained and lethal. Though admittedly maybe it's kind of unnecessary on anything that you wound on a 3, given that these super shooters are all twin linked. I feel like the dream would be to try and get these sustained hits too on this one though for being within 9 inches. Might depend on it arriving and the opponent not just gunning it down straight away, and then leaving it with a position to land close to the enemy the following turn. In theory, it average 18 of those super shooter hits with sustained hits 2 on the 5s and 6s, and that does sound kind of murderous to enemy infantry. Finally, I think the trucks and battle wagons in this one are going to be pretty interesting. The trucks can get that reactive 4 plus invulnerable save stratagem. Definitely makes their rides a little bit harder to take out if you've got something big investment hiding within one. Again, no major changes in the codex, so if you liked it before, you'll like it now. As mentioned earlier, I feel like a battle wagon with a bunch of scary melee units jumping out with that enhancement does feel like it could be a staple in this detachment. Getting knobs or mega knobs up the board far faster than they should be seems like a real win. Overall, between the detachment and the unit profiles though, I think that Games Workshop has probably done enough to at least make Speed Mob interesting and playable casually. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to carry the boggy profiles to a more competitive level. They maybe still just seem a little bit low damage and not really all that strong just on their base data sheets, but I think this detachment really makes some of them super interesting. I feel like the shock jump dragsters and the mega track scrap jets look particularly good with this. Maybe some custom booster blasters to hand out minus one to hit, and then perhaps go heavy on the war bikes and death copters beyond that. Otherwise, it's definitely still a detachment that helps out truck boys a bit. Getting a reactive 4 plus invulnerable save on the truck seems great. And maybe one of the most auto include things for the detachment would be some sort of big scary assault ramp style unit, likely in a battle wagon at my first guess. A big war boss with some mega knobs or a knob squad charging out after the unit's moved seems like it's going to cause some real problems and could certainly put your opponent off trying to close with your speed freaks and hit them hard in close combat themselves. I do like the idea of having a small task force of auto-warping shock jump dragsters to jump over the board and put out some pinpoint firepower and do secondary objectives where needed. I think that even maybe some of the less threatening buggies could still have a lot of use, maybe doing nuisance charges and just being generally big base things that get in the way and hold up the enemy where it makes sense. Feels like that could cause some issues on paper. It definitely doesn't stop you taking other generic good orc units though, Still definitely worth having some Gretchen on the home objective to farm your command points and put OC there. Cheap storm boys for jumping around the board doing secondary units maybe. Though I guess in this one you might be weighing them up against cheap war biker units if you haven't already maxed them out. And obviously scary melee is still going to be a big thing in the orc army. This detachment maybe isn't likely to use the war quite as much as some others out there. So you really could just take one or two focus units and just use the wah when it suits them the most. Maybe some squig old boys to offer some similar sort of targets to all the buggers that you've got going on. But maybe have them even a little bit more on the front line and ready to do a big charge when they need to. I feel like they could be kind of helpful for dealing with enemy tanks and vehicles too. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the cult of speed. It'll be interesting to see if top players come out with any interesting army lists once the official points get released. I'll certainly be looking forward to reviewing some Orky army lists when we get some official points. On the face of it though, I feel like it looks like a good detachment, though I still think it perhaps would have been nicer if the buggies could have been a little bit more threatening just on their base data sheets. They are quite big chunky models that take up a lot of space on the board, it would be nice maybe just to have them be a little bit more nasty. In any case, if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to Orspets Tactics. I'll certainly be aiming to keep a few more Orcs videos coming over the next few days and weeks. And with the Codex and Battle Forces going on pre-order this weekend, if you were looking to save some money versus Games Workshop ordering, then you can order through any of the shops linked in the video description to save between 10 and 20% on Games Workshop's models. Thank you to all of you guys who are using those. They do help support the channel a little bit and help keep these videos coming. Otherwise, if you would like to support the channel more directly, Orspets Tactics does also have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, 
regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.